Making Persimmon Wine and Deer Attractants, William Hovey Smith, 2014. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and here we get involved in making wine and also some projectiles for attracting deer. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and today we are going to make persimmon wine and also some deer attracting aids for the deer stand using our pile of wild persimmons. Yeah! Now that's what these are. Now it is commonly thought that a persimmon must have frost on it before it's edible. That is absolutely untrue. Any ripe persimmon is just fine for eating. These are very tasty, both for people and for deer. And these fruit have actually fallen to the ground. And since we are going to make wine out of them, or beer, depending on the degree at which it should ferment at the time we drink it, uh, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, so we're going to clean up this fruit, take these caps off, as you see, then mash them in a colander, recover the seeds, and then use the seeds to make our deer tractor. And we'll take you through the various steps of the process. Uh, what do we do with these things? Okay, uh, the first thing is you sort of pick them a little bit. You take the caps off, because these will actually flavor the beer product. And we don't want it to do that. And the only difference between beer and wine when you're talking about fruits is the degree of fermentation. The beer is actually drunk green. That is, the yeasty beasties are still alive. Yeah! You're eating living organisms in here. And uh, when you take it to wine, you actually raise the alcohol content here to about 14% if it goes through complete fermentation. And then you proceed to kill off the yeasty beasties or they actually die spontaneously, but you help them a little bit by putting some sulfates in there to kill off any wild ones that might be in there too. And uh, then you proceed to bottle and drink it. Now at that stage, it no longer evolves CO2. So you can put it in bottles and all of a sudden in the middle of the night, you won't hear a bluey, the bluey, the bluey. It's all your beer bottles blow up in the pantry. No, you don't want that thing to happen. Besides, you don't want to lose all your good beer. Now, this is what a persimmon looks like before it's quite ripe. It's still hard. As you see, these are just dead salt. So this one is a little early. Okay? That one would make you pucker if you ate it. But these dead soft ones, yeah. And the fact that the fruit is a little bit dirty and has some things in it and maybe a critter crawling on it or two, uh, no difference. Remember, <laughs> you're going to ferment these things. Plus, we're going to take these through a pre-boiling stage as well. A little pine straw there. And that will kill off any organisms, except mostly the yeasty beasties we put in there for my little packet over here, as well as uh, anything it might get from the air. Because so there's yeast everywhere, including airborne varieties. So anything can get in your fermentation vessel if you're not careful enough to seal it properly. Well, I'm going to pick through the rest of these and we'll get down to the mashing stage. Now we have the persimmons in this colander and we are going to just proceed to mash and separate the pulp from the seeds and see if we can force it through the bottom of the colander. And this is going to take a while, I can tell, because this is pretty viscous stuff. But it's mashing up pretty good. And it's smelling wonderful, by the way. Yeah, any deer ought to be able to smell this for miles. What we discovered was that this was actually too viscous to go through this colander uh, very well. So we had to add water as we went. So my assistant is adding some water now. And so we're just stirring it up thinner and thinner. 
and accumulating the product in this bowl as we go and concentrating our seeds. And this seems to be the way you have to work this material to recover actually the meat from the persimmons. But this is working out pretty good. And it's going to give us the product that we need to actually do our gear scent. So yeah, yeah, we're accumulating a fair amount of stuff now. Now, we actually have three different products. We have in this container the caps from the persimmon. Here we have the seed and the husk and some of the sticky material of the meat of the persimmon. And now we have a bowl full of the persimmon paste itself. Now this we're going to put into this boiler and actually bring to a boil to sterilize the product. That way when we start fermentation we will only have the active yeast culture that we want active and not a bunch of wild yeast doing who knows what. Now that we have our material sterilizing on the stove I'm going to tell you how to make deer sense. Okay we have our goody material here and this contains of course our deer seed and more or less pulp and you put it down on a little piece of paper like this about a tablespoon is right and this is about a three by three inch square of cut paper tiles okay you dollop out like you were making cookies so yeah and once you get these done what you do is twist them up and seal them and put them in the freezer and freeze them and then what you have is something you can throw as projectiles with your slingshot from the deer stand. Now to fold them up, just take them like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you let the cement from the persimmons sort of hold your fold in place and you freeze it just like that. And that way, you'll be able to use a slingshot while, well, you could throw these probably 20, maybe even 30 yards. But these will attract deer as they fall out. We are now about ready to start the process to make persimmon wine. And we have our product here, which is now cool. Now, this has been boiled and it is now somewhat sterile at least more so and so we pour it in the bucket here there is a plastic liner in the bucket and we are going to add additional water also in our mix is going to go our yeasty beasties right here the particular amount is not critical particularly for this smaller product It'll just work off a little faster if you add more. Now we are going to add additional sugar here. And this is four pounds, so we're going to add about two pounds of sugar. Okay. And our water should be about ready. And here it is. Now, as you see, all of this is very critical, meaning not hardly at all. Almost anything will work to some degree, more or less. Stir it up. And what this plastic is for is to strain the pulp out so you'll have a nicer product. Now, we are also going to add some yeast nutrient here and we are going to use about a teaspoon here okay there we go nice clean hands as well as a little peptic enzyme to get it off to a quick start a couple of drops 
Stir. Okay. All right. And this is a food grade bucket, by the way. It's designed particularly for fermentation purposes. We have a lid. And on the top, we have this little device, which you add a little water. And this seals it and keeps any wild yeast from getting in. Okay? So we put it on the top. And we add just a little more water to form an air seal. That's about right. Now, as it ferments, the gas, the CO2, will start percolating through here. Kablunk, 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 kablunk. And it should stay in this container for about six or seven days at normal room temperatures. Here we have our bottled wine, the dregs of the new wine, which is drunk with ceremony, and a glass of the finished sedimentated product. Now, what about the deer attracted projectile department? Well, that's coming along fine too. Now these have been in the freezer, and as you see, they're solid. So, with slingshot, Boom! These can be lost out in the neither regions, and you can scatter your deer scent everywhere. Use of these scent balls may not be legal in all states. Check your regulations. So we will be enjoying our wine or beer, depending on what age we tap it, uh, between about four days for beer and about seven days for wine. We are now at the range where we're going to do a launch of our persimmon scent containers. Okay, that went about 20 yards. What you get out of doing it this way is you get material away from your deer stand without having to physically walk out there and leave scent. Okay, one more trial. It seems that actually the smaller the containers, the better they fly. Yeah, I did pretty good. Okay. Keep them small, and you can get them further. This is Hobie Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Besides backyard deer hunting, I have other books, including Crossbow Hunting, Extreme Muzzleloading, and Practical Bow Fishing, available as soft cover and e-books. I also have an eight-book e-book series on muzzleloading guns, including hunting big and small game with muzzleloading pistols. Now, under ideal conditions, it would have been better to have had the bucket filled nearly to the top to prevent extra air from carrying bacteria into the bucket. However, I just couldn't get enough persimmons to fill it. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 350 videos, go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.